Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got for you today is accessories. I'm gonna go over some accessories that I've been using for the past few months that I really think you could take advantage of depending on your situation. There's so many options out there and there's so many different configurations that you can use depending on what your needs are. So for example, check this out. Um, I actually just set up this rig here so you can see what you can do. In this case, this is the Panasonic GH6, but this could be any camera. All right guys, so I just wanted to thank BH Photo Video for sending me the GH6 with the Leica 12 to 60 millimeter lens. I really appreciate it. All right, so for starters, what we got here is the Black Mamba series cage kit for the Panasonic Lumix GH6, as you can see here. Now, it also comes with the top handle, the Black Mamba top handle. Um, so the rig itself goes for about $100 US. The top handle is another $68. So it is not exactly cheap, but considering the build quality and, you know, like I said, flexibility and user experience that you can get with a unit like this, it is totally worth it in my opinion. You can see here it's got like this cool carbon fiber looking uh, side there just to accent the grip area. It has the Arca Swiss plate on the bottom and it has this Allen key and tightener tool that just magnetically, you know, fits right in there, which is cool. And then of course it threads into the bottom of the camera. And I really like this cage design, how it wraps around the camera so well. So here's mounting the Black Mamba top handle to the top, and it has these two little alignment pins, and it just torques right on there. Now this triangle tightening knob is a little bit hard to grab, but it has those holes, so you could always shove in an Allen key to torque it down a little harder if you need to. Really, feels really secure. Now I do have to take the camera strap off the left side of the GH6, and these little things are kind of hard to get off, but I usually use a, you know, a coin that I have laying around. Uh, something like a dime would work really good. And once you have it spread apart, you could then weave it through the eye hole or the eyelet there and pop that off. Now that's where that little screw is gonna go, as you can see here. So you just take that out with a little tool. And at this point, you can just slide the camera in and it snugs up on the top. There's like a little rubber on the top there and on the bottom it has the screw and the rest of the camera just has a little bit of space all around the cage so there's like a little bit of an air gap um, but you do got to put this screw in as well right here this is what keeps it super stable and supports it to the top side of the camera as well now take a look at this thing and just look at how good the camera is protected and you just throw that key right back in there um, but just again looking around you got the Arca Swiss plate on the bottom so you can just mount it to any kind of tripod that supports that and you can turn this dial here this dial is a little bit harder to turn than it was by default but again super protected you could access all the doors no interference there same thing with the mic port and stuff and you know again like i said i like how just all sides are kind of protected on the camera so no matter where you bump it type thing um it's it's protected now check out the sennheiser mke 400 shotgun mic here now there's a cold shoe slot right on top of the cage and i'm just mounting that right on there and you got the uh you know the wind diffuser sock and you can see now you just plug that into the mic how this looks it's like a perfect setup for a run and gun type shooting very simple very lightweight and an overall excellent situation now we also have the vital pal p6 rgb light now this is a variable light it goes from 2500 to 9000 kelvin um, and it also does full color RGB, which is amazing. It has a 2000 milliwatt amp hour battery, uh, which lasts quite a long time, I gotta say, a couple hours. Now check out this small rig articulating arm with dual ball heads. This unit goes for about $49 and it's extremely rigid when you have it tight. It's also very easy to use. You just loosen up that little lever there and you could just move it all around however you want it and then just torque that lever down. And like I said, it has tremendous power, so it, it locks very, very tight. It reminds me of a Manfrotto Magic Arm, the way it just locks up super tight. And now I can just mount this VitalPal light, the P6 light here, over at an angle, you know, just to get a little side lighting um, if I were to be walking in front of the camera doing some kind of vlogging or if I was following somebody and they were talking in front of the camera, having the light at a nice angle like that is pretty cool. And of course, you can change the color as well to get some fun. Um, accent lighting, for example. Now, here's just what it looks like with this basic setup on the turntable. 
just so you can see. Now, I definitely want to show you the more advanced setup that I have going on. All right, so now what I'm going to do is put the small rig swivel and tilt adjustment monitor mount with cold shoe mount uh, on top. And you can see here, now I could just mount anything, a monitor or a larger light, for example. I have this awesome GVM light I use, um, which is kind of large, but you can use it in a situation like this. Now, this is really what I was intending to use the uh, swivel and tilt adjustment for is the monitor. Now the monitor can just slide right into that hot shoe on the top of the Black Mamba handle and it's just awesome the way it works. Now I got the HDMI cable here. This is the only one I had handy that was full size. So I hooked the HDMI up to the Feel World T7 7 inch IPS 4K HDMI monitor and I have the GVM battery hooked up to the monitor as well so I can use it portably and it works fantastic. It really does. It's so much easier to see what you're doing when you have a monitor like this. Now I could also use the articulating arm with dual ball heads to mount the monitor and I'd be able to move the monitor much further forward if I wanted to, but this setup was just nice to illustrate how I could use it if I were just filming somebody. So I really like the way this monitor works and it also has that nice sun shield on there which will make it way easier to see in bright conditions. That monitor also has false color, it has zebra, it has peaking, um, and it also offers zoom so you can use it for all those features as well. All right guys, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of a closer look at some of these accessories really quick and then we'll move on to a few more accessories that I think you're really gonna wanna check out. So uh, really quick again, just looking at this monitor, just so you can see, it's got a bunch of buttons on the top here. It's got the menu up and down, very easy to navigate, power button. Also has a quarter inch thread here, which makes it really easy to mount other things to. Notice on the bottom how it also has the quarter inch thread there. It's got the USB port for upgrading. Now, if you look at it from the side, it's got an HDMI in and an HDMI out. So you can stream in and then go out to another monitor, which is awesome. So you can have the monitor on top of the camera, which is so cool. Just think about this. You can have the uh, monitor on top of the camera so you can see what you're doing, but then you can have another HDMI cable going to another monitor. So customers or something from another angle could be watching, just as an example. Now it also has a headphone port and it has the DC input. And I actually bought the DC adapter as well. So I could use this when I'm recording, like I'm recording right now with my Sony a7C. By the way, I have an awesome small rig cage on my Sony a7C as well which you might have seen in previous videos, and it's just so versatile using those cages. I just love it. I also particularly like the extra protection the cage provides because occasionally I bump the camera on stuff, and that strong cage just, I don't know, it just makes me feel more comfortable about it. So anyways, again, looking at this monitor, you can put the battery on here. What I have is a GVM NPF 550 style battery, and you can see it just slides on here and locks in. So now I have a portable monitor. And if I hit the power button, it turns on, as you can see. This monitor actually is fairly affordable. It goes for about $158. So in my opinion, that's worth it because it's small enough yet big enough to do what I need to do. One thing I don't like though is when the battery is hooked up, it always has this light on there. So you do have to disconnect the battery or else it will slowly drain it. But that's why I bought the uh, DC plug as well. All right, so here's just a closer view of the VitalPal light. And if I hit this switch here, that'll turn it on. And you can see just how easy it is to use. If you hit this button, it'll change the modes. See, now I'm in color mode. So now I'm in RGB mode. Now I'm in like scene mode where it'll do all sorts of different scenes. And here is color temperature mode. And then if you just change the arrows, you can change the color temperature. And then if you hit this button here, it'll switch between the two options. And now I can lower the power, for example, like that. So it also has a magnet built in here. So you can just stick it to a wall, like an all metal wall, like a vent or something like that. It'll stick no problem. So that's pretty cool. Notice how it also has these cold shoe mounts so you can mount another light. So you could actually put two of these together like this or like this. You know what I'm saying? You could put a whole bunch of them if you wanted to. Have Very impressed. And they're easy to charge with the USB-C port right here. The coolest thing about these lights is they only go for $20. That's incredible value. They're super cheap. Honestly, they should be about $50 based on the battery life features, build quality, ease of use. All right, guys. So another accessory I wanted to show you is this Top Vork uh, power charger. I actually got two of them. So first I have this guy here. Now this is the Top Vork 100 watt 2PD power charger. Now it's 100 watts total. 
um, but it'll put out 45 watts per port if you use both of them at the same time with, for a total of about 90 watts. But if you use just one, you can get 100 watts out of it. That's absolutely remarkable. So I could actually charge my MacBook laptop with this, but why I got this was for cameras like the GH6, for example, you can plug in and um, like so, hook this up, open that, just plug this in, and now, if I bring this back over here, I can plug this in like so. So now I have this super high quality, high wattage PD power source powering the GH6. Now, you still need to have the battery in the camera in order for this to work, but you're pretty much gonna be able to record indefinitely with a power source of this wattage. So that's a really great option to consider if you're looking for those high wattage USB-C type power ports. Now they also make this 60 watt unit. So this guy comes with four ports here. It's got four regular charging ports. They're USB-A ports, and then it has the QC port, and then it has one PD port. So that's really nice. I mean, this, this one PD port is 30 watts, which is a lot. It's not as much as that other charger I just showed you, which is 100 watts um, or 45 if you use both. Now the QC charger is about 18 watts and that'll charge fairly fast as well. The rest of them are about 25 watts or so. But again, this is a nice power brick. You can use this, you know, if you have where you store your cell phones and stuff when you get home from, from uh, work and stuff charging your iPads, things like that. All right, so the next accessory that I wanted to show you guys is really important, um, especially if you want the best possible quality and color accuracy. So this is called the Color Checker Passport, and it's not cheap. It actually goes for about $150. But when you open it up, it has these charts in there. And these are super accurate color charts. They're like, you know, industry standard type charts. And you could use this to calibrate your camera and get those color profiles absolutely perfect. This is really, really valuable if you're trying to make your own LUTs or if you're trying to make like presets in Final Cut Pro, for example. So for as an example, I'm using my Sony a7C here and I'm recording in S-Log2 at 8-bit. So in order to get the colors as accurate as possible, what I would really wanna do is record this under these lighting conditions like so, and then I could calibrate the camera with all these different colors. And you notice how it has the skin tones here, which are just make it so easy to dial in. Um, and then also there's other screens here that you can use for checking exposure, white balance, and things like that. So just a really nice tool. Um, like I said, it is expensive and it has these like clicks built in so it'll stay and hold hold itself up for you Which I really like all right guys So the next accessory I use is probably the one I use the most and that is this leaf photo mini tabletop tripod now This is the MT-03 Tripod and it also has the ball head the LH-25 ball head But what's so cool about this is it has the Arca Swiss type top so this just mounts to the bottom of the small rig cages. So the small rig cage has that Arca Swiss built in. So I can just drop my A7C right into here and tighten it up and I don't have to worry about a tripod plate. And this tripod is so small and lightweight yet strong and easy to use, I just love it. You could see just the build quality is remarkable on this. And the legs actually fold out so you can get the tripod a little bit higher if you want to. For the most part, I usually use this low to the ground. Um, if I need to get a higher off the ground shot, I usually just hand hold these days. Uh, it's very rare that I have to use a tripod uh, at a higher level, other than when I'm in the studio, of course. In that situation, I use a taller Manfrotto tripod. But again, for something that just goes in your bag and it's you want something really high quality but yet really lightweight, this is a good option in my opinion. And you know, you get what you pay for with stuff like this. And that's why I invested in this. Now the tripod actually goes for $140. It's not crazy expensive, but you know you can get small tripods like this for pretty cheap that are plastic. So if you're looking for something that's really high quality, I would recommend looking at this Leo photo for sure. All right, so one other thing I wanted to show you was this cool flexible HDMI cable. If you've never seen one of these, you know, it's just a really nice option for when you have your unit rigged out like I'm going to use. Now, I had to use that larger white cable. I had to use this larger white cable on the Panasonic because it has a full-size HDMI. This one here, I'm gonna use for my A7C because my A7C does not have a full-size HDMI. It's got the micro HDMI. 
So this will go to the camera and this will go to that feel world monitor. And these are fairly affordable. They're like 10 bucks on Amazon. All right guys, so another accessory that I'm using pretty much every day is this Nisi filter. It's the Enhance ND Vario 67 millimeter. Now it comes in a variety of sizes. I just opted for 67 because that's what my largest lens currently is. Now this unit is awesome. It's actually the Pro Nano VND5236 model and it's 1.5 to 5 stops and it has this cool little handle on there. So watch when I turn the handle. So that's wide open and that is fully stopped down. So you can kind of see in there a little bit when I have it wide open. So it also has these dots on the side, but notice the filter is not notched. So it can smoothly shift from one side to the other, which I really like. What's cool about this filter though is the skin tones are so accurate, there's like no color cast. I had a much cheaper ND filter before this. It was like a Gobi. Uh, and variable ND filter and it had a yellow color cast. It still worked fine really, but I had to fix that yellow color cast every time I used it. This one, I don't have to do that. So it, it's really nice in that regard. It's just a higher quality uh, variable ND filter. It was a little bit of an investment for sure, but I highly recommend it. So that pretty much wraps up this quick video on accessories that I'm currently using. I really hope you got something out of it. Like I said, um, everybody's needs are different, you know? So it, not, these accessories might not necessarily be for you. I just wanted to show you what I was using um, because, you know, I have like a studio here. I do some outside shooting for video and photos. So I have a variety of accessories depending on my needs. and. Uh, I just wanted to share it with you because it's so hard to find some of this stuff when you just like if you're looking for a light for example you just it's like where do you even start you know if you just want a light on top of the camera or if you just want a mic there's like thousands of options all right guys i will catch up with you next time if you found this video helpful you know give me a thumbs up maybe consider subscribing and so forth i will catch up with you next time take care